Hello, my name is Seppi and welcome back to the coffee break in Minecraft. Today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. We do have a bit of an Enderman party going on here. At least one of them is holding a block of dirt in his hands. I'm quite sure the other one is doing the same. Oh man, I really hope in the future I will... There's a third one! There's a third one right next to that village. Oh man, yes indeed, both are holding dirt in their hands. Oh man, these guys, these guys are so annoying. I really hope in the future I will find a means to deal with them or at least to stop their behavior. That would be good. All right, let's continue on by breaking the camp without looking at the Enderman. Okay, now after I brought some distance between me and them, I can uh, safely get the map out and continue with uh, my expedition. I can also continue with the story of my expedition to the Faroe Islands. I progressed to the third full day. The third full day started a little bit cloudy in the morning, but soon turned out to be yet another sunny day. However, it was also a windy day. Nothing really to write home about, but in comparison to all the other days, it was the day with the most wind. So this was a bit of a difference. I stayed on Vagar Island, which is in the southwest of the Faroe Islands. So during my expedition to this beautiful country, I slowly made my way up to the northeast, thus crossing all the islands and exploring their beautiful sites. That was, of course, also the goal for the third full day. After having explored most of the southwestern part of the Faroe Islands. It was now time to get more into the center of the Faroe Islands. My goal was to get to some coastal towns, of course, that are very small and here quite beautifully located at the end of fjords. Sometimes even only accessible by some very interesting mountain passes. So yeah, I set out on that journey. Since the Faroe Islands are a series of islands, they are either connected by bridge or by tunnel. The Aoi. The tunnels are not for free, so you basically need to pay a fee to get through a tunnel. So I was kind of happy that I booked the the tunnel pass, or however they called it, the, the car rental service. This tunnel pass allowed me to at least drive through two of the three tunnels. I think they have four tunnels already. Well, at least I, I was I was free to drive as often as I like through two of the tunnels that connect Vagar Island with the with the adjacent island and which connects the north eastern islands with the with the central island. The cool thing about those tunnels is the fact that at some part they were beautifully illuminated, so the, the first tunnel, the, the tunnel from Vagar 
to the other island had some blue and green lights. The other tunnel that brought me later on the, the next day to the northeast or to the northern isles of the, the Faroe Islands. This one had, I think, red and white or so. So it was really cool to drive down there and all of a sudden you you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, the I'm at the bottom of a seabed or something like that. That's cool. That was really cool. So, yeah, set out on my journey. I had to first, of course, get through the tunnel and then I used for the very first time the the bridge that connects then the, the next island. Of course, I could have gotten to the to this this other island also by by a tunnel but this tunnel was not included in the the travel path so I opted for that bridge also the bridge brought me closer to my my first destination which was a small little village fisher town I think every 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 village is a fisher, fishing village or so and every village also has several of those salmon farms around it, which is kind of cool. Speaking of salmon, in the grocery store I got some some very good salmon from the Faroe Islands. So that, that was also delicious. It was, was nice to get some, some fortunately only frozen fish. On the last day, as I was just looking for what, what else can I still do, what, what are some some things I, I can still do within one day. I discovered a fish shop where you can get fresh fish even from the region. Unfortunately, the shop had closed on the weekend, so no chance for getting real fresh fish. But that, that's thing for the for the next time when I get there to buy some some fresh fish that was caught out there or so. I think that's that's also cool. Anyways, um, yeah. Got to the to my first destination, small little village. It had a very nearby lake, so I walked around that lake to stretch out the legs a little bit, to take in a bit the scenery. It was also cool as well, not similar to that that floating lake, the big lake I explored the 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 day before, but still this lake also. Got really close to to the seashore again. So once I reached the opposite side of that that lake, I also reached the the the, the coast again, which kind of resulted in the fact that I was on the one side. I mean the 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 little village was located on on one side of the the island. Then there was a lake. Then there was already the opposite side of the island. So basically. By walking around that lake, I crossed the entire island. <laughs> at least at this spot. I mean, at this spot, the, the island was kind of narrow. Other spots was a little bit bigger, of course. The village was also located next to the tallest mountains of the Faroe Islands. Interesting. There's a light source. Why is there a light source? But that's cool. This looks this looks really cool. That's that's also an interesting feature, I must say. <laughs> A very interesting feature. Um yeah, it's it's close to the tallest mountain, the highest mountains of the, the Faroe Islands. So for a moment, as I was Thinking about this, huh? What what do I like to do today? I mean, I wanted to explore those those small coastal villages, and on the other hand, I thought, well, oh, getting on top of this highest mountain where it's even described as on a on a sunny day, you can get a view of the of of all Faroe Islands, basically. That was kind of intriguing. So I was thinking for the about this for a moment, but then I realized. 
Ha, huh, it's already kinda windy down here at sea level. So climbing up to the highest mountains of the Faroe Islands, where absolutely no shelter from the wind exists anymore, most certainly will result in me being in even more stronger winds. So not sure if it will be really an enjoyable experience or a good experience or a worthy experience when being blown away, especially at the clouds, where also moving by rather quickly. In this case, I thought, okay, mountaineering, not for today, or it, or maybe even not for for the entire for the entire expedition. But at some point, at some point in the future, when I return to the Faroe Islands, I definitely have to scale a couple of mountains. I have to get to this highest mountain. I have to get to other mountains also. Um, yeah, so so not 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 highest mountain. But uh, I, I can at least continue to drive and um, get to get to to those so smaller villages I wanted to get to, and uh, that's what I did. After having having finished my my journey around the the lake and returned to the car, jumped back into the car, continued to drive. The roads got really narrow so that, that where once again those one lane roads with lots of lots of leeways for letting approaching traffic passing by which was kind of fun to drive on on the way to the to the next destination i also came by some nice viewing points from where i can see some neat features at the cliffs once again some some lonely standing rock formations or so out in the water in front of the cliffs. That was kind of cool to, to just take in the scenery again to see how the sea uh, and the cliffs and so on look like. So th th this, was, this was really, really great. And um, yeah, so I, I made I made my way over various mountain passes and uh, very narrow roads and so on to the, the the next small and very interesting village. It was kind of cool as it had a somewhat natural harbor. This village also is known for their puffin colonies. Unfortunately, puffins are only there late spring, early summer. By the time I got there, I haven't seen a single puffin. Maybe there might have been somewhere a puffin left or so, but I think most of them have already left the island, so no puffin for me. I guess I have to come back at a different season or so. Oh, we have a very, very small jungle situation going on here, I guess. That's cool. That's very cool. And, um, well, yep. Yeah, the, this, the, this village and also the, the, the next few villages I visited were located at a, at a stream coming down from the, from the mountains. So th that was kind of cool on the one side. It was really a beautiful mountain stream running through the village, which often was crossed by some very small bridges, so every, everything looked kind of quaint and um, beautiful, cozy, so I, I really enjoyed that. And the other hand, there were the cliffs and the open sea, so that was, that was really a cool place. The first big village, I, I don't even know how to pronounce <laughs> the name of the village because it starts with a with a G and then I think a J or something like that. So I, I have absolutely no idea how, how I, I spoke to a local on, on the other day and he asked me if I I've been to that village at 
first I didn't understand what will she was talking about until I put together the the syllables he said and I realized okay I guess he meant that village so yes I have been there but yeah it, it has it, it has a very distinct name at least I can't pronounce anyways it, it seemed to be also a tourist attraction while I was there I everything was calm and okayish just a few tourists but then as I was nearly done with exploring that little, little, little village, lots of tour buses arrived, so three in total arrived, and all of a sudden the entire little town was swarming full of people. So th this got a little bit too much. I first wanted to have my, my lunch break in that village, but then I thought, okay, too many people. So I drove to the to the outer part of that village and sat next to that stream running through the village to have a have a nice lunch break in the sun and the nature with a with a nice view on the stream that, that was also cool subsequently continued on you now got to a similar small village i th this was the small village was not even part of my original plan just was on the way to my my next bigger destination of a small town also nestled at the end of a fjord. Um, I I just saw okay there, there's this village I I'm, I'm driving past it let's let's just walk through it. it was also pretty nice and what 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 really was fun I mean that this does not speak for that village but what really got me a little bit off guard where I had a good laugh about I. As I got into that village, needed a toilet, was kind of happy to to see a, a sign referring me into the direction of a, of a public toilet. As I got in there, I saw that the, it, it was not just a public toilet, it was like a, well, not a big room, but, but kind of significant large, large room that not only featured a toilet, but also a shower. <laughs> so if I wanted, I could have also taken a shower uh in uh, in that that public toilet which i found pretty cool i was thinking huh maybe maybe there's also some some wild camping going on or so and they the the village likes to to offer something for all their visitors or so so th th this was cool to, to find a random shower basically in a very small little village with just a few people living there i guess and this was also a cool thing about the entire Faroe Islands, it was not crazy overrun with tourists, but they really seem to care about the tourists and they really have a perfect infrastructure. They have so many offers for tourists and so on. So, and for traveling, exploring and so on. So this, this was really cool. And yeah, after having explored that, that little village continued on to my my next destination, I should have really noted down all the names of the towns, even though I can't pronounce them, that I at least can throw a name at you. <laughs> but uh, I unfortunately didn't, so I, you, you just have to trust me that I'm following the coastline to get to, to, the, to the next village or other village. This one was a bit bigger. There, there wasn't something super special about it besides that some um, some cool metal arch, some some cool figures cut out of metal at the harbor, which gave it a, a nice little colorful flair, artistic flair. And um, they also had not a shipwreck, but a somewhat of an old ship right at, at their beach. So this was also cool that they always had beaches at their, their little villages and the beaches were also especially used by the the children for swimming but even grown-ups adults were, were occasionally jumping into the water so that was also cool to, to see how they how even the the locals enjoy being outdoors and using beaches the sea everything so that, that was nice 
with that additional little town being explored. That's neat. What a neat archway. That's cool. It was time to slowly make my way home. But on the way home, I saw, okay, there's there's an old road, old in the way that they now build, constructed a, a different road to the to the capital, to Tosaun. And this old road that goes over mountain passes is no longer used, especially during winter times, of course. It's easier to, to drive the rather protected sea level road. But I thought, hey, I can get up there. There are some viewing points marked on my on my on my map so let's let's just explore it. let's take in the scenery from there also I was still intrigued the day before as I drove home I saw on one of the mountains the the cupola of a radar station and I was still curious about well when, when there's a radar station and I looked it up on, on the internet it's no longer in use it was a former U.S. radar station. Then there must be a way up there. So I was also curious, where, where is that? So followed that that other old road for a bit. Took some, some pictures, enjoyed the view from up there. And uh, then I saw a very, very small road bleeding uphill. First I thought, hmm, Maybe it's not something for the public. I still entered that road to see a sign there like, okay, very, very narrow mountain road. No de-icing, no sl snow plowing in the winter. Please drive very carefully. But there was no information like, hey, don't, don't drive there. So intrigued. By this, I, I drove up there, and I ended up almost at the the radar tower. Of course, there, there. I mean, they said you you can't drive until the, the radar tower, but before that was a was a nice parking area next to the almost next to the summit, and from up there I had a magnificent view down. Unfortunately, it was also a little bit cloudy, so uh, yeah, there, there were also lots of clouds moving around. The, the fun thing was, at this height, I was at the same same level as the uh, the uh, the clouds. So yeah, same altitude as the clouds. Clouds were moving past me. It was really fantastic. At first, I started basically the day on sea level, and then I was up at I don't know 600 meters. 500 meters above ground, above sea level or so, so definitely super high up in the clouds. And th this was a, an adventurous but also marvelous ending of the third full day. Really enjoyed that one, really enjoyed the the view from there. If I would have had another day, as I said, I think, I thought I had enough time planned, but there's so much to see that need more time I need to return there I should have returned to that to that mountain on a full sunny day without clouds next time I know about it I have to get there when there are no clouds because then must be really a spectacular view from down there when you can really see everything and, and a local also rec recommended me to get there to to see the sunset this must also be great so yeah plans for the future but uh, yeah th this will really in a nice and adventurous drive uphill to um, see uh, to 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 have this this nice view down there and to also be at the same level at the clouds. So yeah, that was that was a cool day. That was a very great day. And uh, surprisingly, I just managed to talk about one day. <laughs> Uh, man, speaking of the, the Faroe Islands really takes... What is this? Why are the, the wolves colored differently? That's interesting. Um, yeah, so... so Takes longer than anticipated to, to, to discuss my journey. 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you join me next time when I continue with the full, full day on the Faroe Islands. Until then, my name is Abby. See you.